the three, and I want to bring something into this. And there are a few clips that illustrate this. This is another umbrella, security and protest. And there were three big items under this in 2023. Of course, the plot to remove the IGP was one. And then, of course, the Ashama military brutalities, and something talked about at the beginning. And then Occupy Jubilee protest, the three-day protest that went on at the Jubilee House, also had its own ramifications. A few of the clips to illustrate this, these big stories this year. Wait, what caused, what caused this? What did they use to beat you? Any weapon they're having on their hands, others were using rope. He still have some bruises behind him, but we can show that on TV. They were using these are assault weapons. marks behind you. Yes, sir. What kind of weapons? Others were using neem tree branches and um, cables, pipe, PVC pipes, and all stuff of things that they are holding. They asked me to roll on the ground. Head, but this cut is from the bed. The bed that they were, they might lose the bed and they hit it, and I, I was trying to parade it, and I had a cut. I wouldn't want doctor to become the flag bearer and we lose the elections. Mr. Chairman, as I sit here, I can't remember. You cannot remember? Yes, Mr. Chairman. But this piece of um, transcription, did you have a voice correlation on the audio? Yes, yes, yes. It was, yes, it was an audio. Yeah. And is that your voice or has been improvised? The voice resembles my voice, but I can't remember making those things. I'm not denying or accepting because I can't remember. Yes. The so therefore, you are having memory challenges in relation to your own voice. The chairman, it's not everything that you say that you can remember. Anytime. He said so many things about this current IGP and what he has done and what he's not doing. And the promise he gave him that he has not satisfied the promise and the fact that Likelihood of him being changed is about 100%. And they are scouting for one person who can do the work well. I can see now your memory is working, you know. <laughs> your memory is working so strong. By the strength of your personality, it will prevent the New Patriotic Party from breaking the eight. What, do, what is your response to some of these matters? Honorable Chair, that is somebody's opinion about me, and I can't question somebody's opinion. What I said yesterday, if you give me the chance today, I will say so again. He is not managing the police service well. And for me, for the 31 years that I've been in the service, I can tell you he's the worst IGP we've ever had. <laughs> want to be able to move towards Ju the Julobi house and be in the forefront as we requested to be. That's what we are waiting to move. So when the police give an indication, so far they have barricaded us and we are stuck in the middle. We don't want to continue to inconvenience Ghanaians who are out, out there. We want the traffic to flow, the fellow citizens to get about their business. We are pleading with the police to allow the demonstrations to pass through. Blocking here is not safe. We are asking the police again, blocking people here is not safe. We want traffic to flow. That's what we are pleading with the police. I'm talking about taking drawer I'm not talking about Ubering or driving. I'm talking about taking that drawer drawer. At times I have to make sure that it, the money I'm holding is enough so I don't get embarrassed. What is it? No, because it's different if you say like, oh, I just have one source of income or maybe I'm not even working. Yeah. I wo I've been working for seven years. Give me a break. I should have something to my name that shows that yes, I've been working in this country. Samson, let me start with you. Three big stories. I know Ashaiman is very key. So let's start with that. What, what about Ashaiman, though? And also, looking back now, we still don't have closure. Right. The fact that we don't have closure is my major concern. It's, it's already happened. Um, I cannot wrap my mind around why the military will conduct an operation 
and conducted in the manner they did under a constitutional government, a constitutional yeah. regime of yeah. the rule of law, that the military will invade that part of Ashaiman in their helicopter and of officers instructed to main people, instructed to brutalize people, to violate people's essence of being human. Our constitution says that the dignity of every person is inviolable. That very day, the constitution was thrown into the dustbin. Now, my concern is that when this happened in March, I expected that there would be immediate and swift action to correct this. That's my biggest concern, that there is absolutely nothing that has been done to seek to correct this. Now, the military claimed that the trooper who was unfortunately killed and the reason why they went to this place, that they had they had intelligence that's the word they use in their press statement that they had intelligence intelligence led them to move people from their homes from their sleep move them into the rain and in the mud and make them you know lie on the on the, in the mud and whip them what intelligence led to picking up as many as 184 people or so, and then eventually releasing all of them. Not a single one of the 184 was deemed a suspect to face the law for the, the, the killing of the young trooper. The police also spoke about intelligence, which led to the arrest of six people. Out of the six, um, I, I don't remember exactly, but about one or two of them um, had to be released because it was so, some sort of a mistake at the time. My question is, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Republic of Ghana, is it the same President Akufuado? Is it the same Nana Akufuado who fought for human rights? Is it the same person I read about in the law reports? And I'm proud, I, I was proud to quote and reference when I'm making argument before judges in the courts in the in the in the courtroom. Is it the same person? Do you remember a word from the president over this? Please, if any one of you remembers, please tell me. And I, I don't. don't. Not a single word for something that can only be imagined in the jungle. Not even in a military regime. This happened. So what have the military been taxed to do? This is not something you don't know who did what. Mm. This was state sponsored. The state knew. Okay? They knew about it. I, I started talking about it and I told myself I would talk about it every Saturday um, or as often as I can until some action had been taken. The military high command invited me to a meeting I attended. Look, they were respectful. The, the man at the very top and his men, very respectful in the engagement. I was very clear with them that you cannot entertain this in a democracy, irrespective of some of their, their, their suggestions that their PR even propagated publicly, you know, that some people in Ashaiman were happy about it. Jesus me, this happened in Ghana and absolutely nothing has happened. It took only the... Uh, what's the name, o Oliver Bakavomawo, to mobilize a group of lawyers and other volunteers 
to go and try and keep some record, record the people that were violated and to see what could be done to help them. This must be, it's not even about investigation. I don't even like talking about it. And our parliament sat down. That's, that's, that's very heartbreaking. But they, they actually went there. They sent a, a committee there to go and meet the people and spoke to them. And they told that they're going to issue a report. Nothing happened. Nobody has been held accountable. And the people who have violated in this egregious manner, not a single one of them have their medical bills paid for by the state. And there is no any contemplation as yet of any compensation to anybody who has violated this much. How should I be? I don't know how to think about this. Living in a country that is supposed to be a democratic state. Mm. That is living in a country where we are, we are told the rule of law is what is upheld. This is the rule of law turned upside down completely. Okay, and this is why one of the reasons you hear me in one of my take talk about a failing democracy. And people who mean well say, you, did you want to say a failed democracy or a failing democracy? <laughs> Something must be done. And the media must not also, the media must not make the mistake, must not make the error in ending the story on the Ashaiman brutality. We must not. We must continue for as long as something you know, has to be done. We must continue. We can't allow this. We and, can't allow this. And it, and it comes back to the point, Shamima, realistically, what can yes. be done? And I link this also to the Occupy Julobi protest, because on day one of that, there was a huge clash with the police. Yes. People were arrested. Uh, we saw accusations of people being molested, etc. Of course, the police then subsequently met them, you know, you know tried to deal with these. But, but this appears to be something that recurs. I mean, what, what can really right. be done? Okay, Evans. So um, I did um, my GJA thesis, which was exploring sexual harassment, was titled The Culture, Climate, and Consequences. Okay, so I'm just going to use that title to address this issue. There's a, there's a culture, there's a climate, and it breeds the consequences that we see. If you look at goal 16 of the SDGs, it speaks about promoting peace, justice, and strong institutions. Promoting peace, justice, and strong institutions. It means all these elements must go together if we are to have peaceful, progressive, and safe societies, okay? If you look at the Ghana Police Service, there's a lot of studies that shows that the Ghana Police Service has found it difficult to remove themselves from the colonial vestiges because it, the, the character of the Ghana Police Service emanates from the history of the Ghana Police Service. So, I mean, um, the current IGP has received some positive plaudits for trying, and I think um, to be fair, other IGPs in the past have tried to kind of remove the, the, the police service from this yoke or character and image of you know the colonial police that um was once to always use a heavy-handed approach to dealing with issues and to also suppressing dissent. You know, uh, the, the, the character was to control the citizens and all kinds of of ways and means are used to try to put fear, and fear is like a, a very vital commodity in that kind of setup, where fear is used to control citizens' dissent, and we saw it plumbing down on protests, showing where power lies, so that next time you think twice before wanting to step out into the arena and exercise your civic rights and, 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 and duties. If you look at this particular history, I think that the we as the media are also key stakeholders. We must frame the narratives to challenge this character that still finds expression, even in our so-called modern day policing 
you know, um, face, because this is what we are told. We are told that the Ghana Police Service is trying to imbibe a modern day policing approach where the police is your friend, the police lives and work within the community. And we're all supposed to support the police to bring, you know, security to our community. I was reading some of the underhand ways in which, you know, security agencies, and it came up because of this Israeli-Palestinian uh, um, war that is ongoing, and some of the modus operandi of um, one side of, of, of the conflict, I won't mention him, but the, the fact that um, a former officer of that army says that sometimes they will just get a call and be told to go to this community and they would show you a house. You would go there, at, you know, at dawn in the middle of the night, you would um, arrest everybody in that household. You would blindfold sometimes the head of the house and you would put them in a vehicle, drive them away to another far off place. They don't know what they've done. The, 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 neighbors, the neighbors are all coming out and they are asking what's happening, what's happening. They don't know. They begin to think that, oh, or maybe he's an informant or maybe he's a terrorist. They don't really have the answers. And then they drop this person in the middle of nowhere. Nothing is done to him. And he finds himself back home. And the fear that this generates where you sit and you don't really know what your crime is, when or how you're going to be picked or attacked, is, is one of the ways in which the, 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 the police or security institutions use that have not really cloaked themselves with internal democratic principles continue to use. I said that there's a difference between the lawful and the awful, and I said this with response, um, you know, reaction to the Occupy Jolobi um, house protest. Mm -hmm. This is a country where many young people are stressed. Many young people are reverting to unhealthy habits of gambling, of drug usage, just to make some money to leave because the state has, um, you know, the state has failed to provide opportunities to these young people who should form the human capital mm. for our country. And two thirds of global wealth is human capital. But here we are, most of our young people are not getting access to quality education. They are not getting access to opportunities for self-development. They are not getting access to start and grow and sustain their businesses. The few that have ventured into, into entrepreneurship, when you put 100 Ghanaian youth entrepreneurs in a room, they will tell you that the, 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 the so, precious... So, so I the asked problems, Samima, so I asked Samima, reason, yes. so Occupy Jullaby went ahead. Looking back now, considering all the challenges you mentioned that the youth face, yes. do you think that there have been any benefits from that protest, three-day protest, um, really impactful at the time. Government officials were forced to talk. It got all of us yes. talking. But now months on, did he achieve much? And what, what, what did he achieve? What we achieved was a clear message. And it is, it is important we, continuous, uh, we, we continue to communicate clearly some of these actions. You see, good sense is supposed to be easy. If the police had not intervened in the manner that they had intervened, the kind of traction that the, that protest received may not have happened. The social media advocacy that grew, that brought tons and tons of young people out to protest was as a result of this particular decision by the Ghana Police Service. Mm. So sometimes, you know, God works in mysterious ways. It exposed to us the nature of our Ghana Police and how they relate to these matters. And I'm like, if you do this, what you're also doing is, to, is contributing to a, a problem that you may not be able to deal with because young people must find avenue to to air out their grievances and you cannot push them to bottle those things when you don't have any 
productive avenue for them to resolve those differences. If you are asking whether it has changed in terms of the nature and of, 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 of the corruption, whether you, you and I know that we cannot erase corruption overnight in mm. a matter of years, but it served a purpose to draw attention to the powers that be. The Interior Ministry, they have known it. They know that this youth, this youth of Ghana can either be a demographic dividend or they can become the agents of mm. destabilization. Yeah. And they saw signs of it because it would just take a little spark to create chaos. And so I believe that the fact that this particular protest led to critical conversations. You are in the media, I'm sure you knew, at the highest level, the conversations that were happening to ensure that they assuage these young people. And that was why they were able to continue with the next few days. But the police is always constantly finding it difficult to remove themselves from yeah, this and, very and, oppressive, you know, image. And, I wanna... and that's why this, and the, and the, and the court system also contribute to, like I'm saying, to, to create a culture of impunity. Yeah. Because when the court system and, and you mentioned, and you mentioned, and you you mentioned deny rights, mm -hmm. you are playing into the same problem. Yeah, and you mentioned an institution there, and I want to come to Raymond on that same uh, argument. Yeah. Something talks about the media. Shaima talks about the courts. But we have Shraj. Shraj condemned the yes, Ashaiman, yes, yeah, Ashaiman, yeah. what they issued a statement to say condemned yeah. it. But beyond that, we, we've seen pretty much very little. I mean, as for the Occupy Julobi one, I think the police and the protesters found a way to sort of cooperate going forward. But the Shama also remains an issue for you, just like... Yes, and it's because Thompson. I felt we have actually gone back so many years. Let's not get it wrong. I, I did scars of the revolution. So if you check, we actually tracked the periods of unconstitutional rule mm. and the atrocities that were committed during those periods. Between PNDs and AFRC, 84% of the atrocities were committed within that period. Some of the things that were done to people in Ashaman, it was almost like at the peak of an AFRC attack or any of the other unconstitutional periods. So if you see some of the people with the signs and the marks on their Stars back, on their back. Yes, it is very similar. And I saw people in Kumasi, I saw people elsewhere who are similar, what they call problems, even now are still very sad about it. What was distasteful was that even the military high command was engaged in a lot of lying and untruth saying right from the beginning. You remember the story they told us first? Yes, a military man had been attacked by a community and this has happened elsewhere. If we don't make sure that we stop this immediately, the entire state is going to collapse. People are testing our security. We have uh, what they call on our hands. How, how do you call that thing? We have terrorism Sorry. on our hands. <clears throat> we have everything on our hands. If we don't send a clear signal to the people that nobody is allowed to attack military people, at the end of the day, all of that invasion based on intelligence was no intelligence at all. And we know that. Mm. They didn't get a single individual from their soup who was connected to the incident. It was subsequently that the police did their own investigation and got the right people. And we know what really happened to the soldier had nothing to do with a coordinated society wide attack on anybody. So everything the military said was untrue. That is when we expected the leader of the military, the commander in chief, to come out and say, this has been done wrong. We will fix it this way and we'll do this going forward. Beyond that. But the, the, uh, the defense minister spoke. Isn't that no, enough? With, with respect, he's not a commander in chief of the armed forces. Why is that important? He played a dual role. As president of the republic, you have to protect every individual within the community and also lead the military. His signal would have sent us some, some reprieve. And we know the president has been talking about irrelevant things elsewhere, even though sometimes he talks about relevant things too elsewhere. But this was so crucial, mindful of his own history as the president of this country. And the fact that a community got bastardized and even, even people you expect to know better was how oh, they deserved it. Because that community, they like misbehaving. As if, if we planted the same sort of people in a different community and actually asked the military to brutalize, that would have been justified in any way. But you think about it throughout our history. When we did our National Reconciliation Commission and the report came out, you ask yourself how many other people have actually been dealt with differently. Move it along. When we came to Asaman, no, not Asaman, the Ayahuasca West were gone. Problem and the white people that came out. So I was not looking forward to any committee, including Parliament's own. They said we're going to set up. 
Because but, but, okay, we are so, going to so end up with all, a all, all, all of you, all of you say. I was expecting the mm -hmm. commander in chief to act right okay, on wait. behalf of the people. So, 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 so question, question, then uh, to you and Samson. All of you say something must happen. What did you expect should happen? That specifically it, beyond saying that the commander must speak. That what, what, the what? next, the next day mm -hmm. or after a month or two, they'll come out and tell us that this set of people went out to do this based on this command. We have relieved of position the people who actually coordinated and put this thing in place. Well, but I remember that, that the statement that, that was issued that, said that, that the, is, the, the, the instructions came from the military high command. Yes, that is what I'm saying. So that, what you're suggesting okay, is I said that. you're saying that the president was actually the one who ordered them to do that. We know he didn't do that. So when they said military high command, there's an operational team so, in place. And those are the people who are expected to be held responsible. So Evans, there's And always... that is how rule of law works out. No grouping of people should be given special powers to act as if so they are the you're saying that the CDS, CDS should have been removed because... Why not? Is it not also a Daniel no, like any the, other if person? The, if the CDS gave the order. Yes. If the army commander gave the order. First of all, you see, this is... Uh, from all the foregoing, it's obvious that there was no intelligence gathering. Everybody knows that today. At best, field intelligence. A team that's fighting and, and, and uh, that's good, And that's not good for our military. Yeah. Okay, and so that's when you actually send the right signals. In the 21st century, 2023, one person is killed. The military says, and the military goes into a community, whips everybody. So when Including they meet those you, passing through who have no business in the they community. They meet you and they Drivers meet. who are driving to other, other places. That is, that is unacceptable. And look, in the, the CDS, the Army commander, all of them should have... Inst I mean, if they gave the command, the president should have fired them. If they didn't, whoever gave that command should have, I mean, been fired. Whoever gave that command should have been taken through the military's own processes yeah. and due sanctions giving and all of us informed of it. Because, look, recently, they went, I mean, in the north, some national security. The Garo place. The Garo place. They went beating. You see, and when you talk, I mean, that, as national security topic, what do you see? This is the thing now. Today, when one person does something, military, national security descends into a community mm -hmm. and starts beating people. If you don't stop it, and I say it all the time, because if you don't talk about it, if we don't stop it, one day it will be done to you. Yeah. And so, I, I, and, and, and at the time, I mean, um, Ken Thompson, because he said it on there, Ken Thompson's driver, mm -hmm. who was getting onto a motor to come and pick the man, was grabbed, beaten. Oh, dude, you, you guys, I mean, that thing in this republic. And you see, to think that Nana Akufuado is president, the man who defended... The human rights lawyer. The, I mean, you see, human rights lawyer, okay, is president. And this is what is happening. Anyway, let me add the... Let me talk about the IGP and the protest. Yeah, the IGP. Uh, yes, let me talk about the occupied Jolobi. I mean, I support demonstrations, and at no point in time would I say that somebody be denied a chance to demonstrate. And I say it all the time, that look... If you deny the person the chance, it becomes more popular. Yeah. If they had a laugh at in this particular, <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, it yeah. was as if the police are coordinated with the demonstrators to improve their demonstration. Yes, mm -hmm. because, because the police, it was their first day stunt. That actually got a lot more people interested in this matter. Yeah, because if they had allowed them to demonstrate on the first day, a lot of people would have wouldn't have showed up. But when once they created a scene, people were called into. But the court. policing improved. I think they sort of learned the lesson no, it, it, see, for me, the second and third me, days. Let me tell you something. Uh, IGP Dampari. You can hate him. But the man wants to do something right. I have had issues with some of his uh, you know, publicity things. And you know, I say it all the time. <laughs> I, mean, I don't say it publicly, but I'm saying it publicly. I've had issues with some of the things he does. I've called it PR policing. But put that on aside. Whatever it is, is doing something right with the Ghana Peace Service. Yeah. And, it's, and let's acknowledge it. Because whatever it is, he just doesn't want to be you know, termed as a worst performing IGP, mm -hmm. he wants to be seen as the person who transformed the police service. And so you would see that he would try and make sure that things work and work very well. And that's why for me, I think that, look... Um, link, link, link that to the plots to... That's what I'm going to. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what I'm going to. You see, in this country, we actually have people planning that you want to remove an IGP. And you're in the Ghana police service. And the only reason you want the IGP out is that he will not help the government to win. How wouldn't he help the government to win? Why? I thought elections were supposed to be free and fair. Yeah. And the police, the police were supposed to ensure that. So when you have people within the police service, well, no wonder, because that man wants to become member of parliament for the mm. choir. Yeah. 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 So he would want to do that. But if you have people in the police service plotting to do this, 
It's still a being invested. I mean, there were and, and, and don't forget the context. It came after Asin North. Yes. When the NPP had lost in that primary. And then he's, he's seen talking to Bugu Nabu to say, well, we lost. This guy will not help you next year. So look, a case to remove look, him. Very opportunistic, actually. Look, look. Let the will of the people prevail. An IGP is appointed by the president, but is there to serve the people of this country. When you are a policeman, you're there to serve the interest of the nation, the state Ghana, and not the interest of a political party, and not even the parochial interest of a president. Let me ask a question before we wrap up yeah. on this. So this now is in the hands of parliament. Yes. In fact, we should add to that the Ashaiman thing, because they went to investigate that too, yes. right? So both are in the hands of parliament. I think the Ashaiman one, and something is right, we need to keep the focus on the debate. As for the IGP one, the committee was formed, the report and the stand is done. We spoke to the yes. chairman about it. So we're going to, what do you expect the parliament first to do about the IGP plot matter? I mean, the report is going to come out. We, we all watched and heard, right? Okay. So we all came to conclusions as to you know, what was said and what happened. The fact-finding was done in the full glare of the public, yeah. with the exception of a few in-camera hearings, right? So what do you expect, very briefly, one minute, on IGP first, on IGP, uh, Winston? Well, I mean, uh, when it comes to the IGP's investigation, I expect the man to continue with his work. Yeah. I mean, the evidence is there for all of us to see. I mean, if there are administrative problems, yeah, that's something they can settle. But today... The Ghana Police Service is better than what he came to meet and what he inherited. When it comes to the Ashaiman one, look, Parliament should compel the military, okay, compel the president to actually take the necessary action. Yeah. Whoever gave that order should be sanctioned according to the laws and according okay. to the rules of the First of all, on, on, on Dampari. Dampari. And no, actually, plot. frankly, my view was that they should abrogate that waste of time of a committee that they were engaged in. I don't think it serves anybody's purpose. The man will continue with his work. The entire, the entire process and every job, people will try to remove you for very different reasons. I think people like the gentleman who's going to contest the position should be ashamed of himself. He is no honorable police officer. Let's be quite clear on that. To, to be thinking that your job is to protect a sectional interest and not the peace of the country should never be the positioning of a proper police person. So as for that particular one, we can isolate it and deal with it. But I do not think, and if, if, if I what about, what about if I wanted the a committee to be of any use, they should recommend changes in the appointment of an IGP. Yeah. Removing, if, if it, they can do that, if they will be of any use in this case, that's where if they direct their attention, but continue with investigating tape one, two, three, four, and subsequent reviews of tapes, it's just a waste of my time. One positive from this tape is that it gave us a, something we knew. It gives us a, a clear picture of how uh, IGPs have become subject to political maneuvering yeah. and political influence peddling. And I agree. And they become victims of yes. that. I mean, I, I say hands down, the IGP is the best and in terms of public with, servants. We should start with... But if this didn't come out, it's if, very possible that he may have been removed. Changes, if MPP yeah. is no longer in power, we should have a system where ITPs have a tenor independent of who is in charge of the And country. they are not appointed by the president. Yes, and I agree perfectly. Yeah. If that's any change that the committee can do, they should actually make those recommendations. They can take it out from there and evolve a system out of that. As for the idle gossip, I don't think it's going to take us anywhere. Yeah, and, and then the, on the Ashaman bit... I don't think much would happen to it. Well, it's just going to be a blot on our conscience for a very I, I long time. I agree with you. And, and, something, and, 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 something, and something to you too, what do you expect Parliament to do? And I must say, I, I don't think anything will happen on the Ashaiman thing. Yeah, you, I, I know it's, it's hard to take, but this is Ghana. But what, what about you? I know you are very optimistic. What do you expect it's to a happen? Complete waste. It's a complete waste of our time. Um, and resources, what Parliament is doing with the IGP issue. And um, Raymond and um, Winston? Winston, thank you very much. You just, you just said all I needed to say about that police officer. And guess what? He's, he's campaigning and the party people, the traction to him is that he sought to protect the party. Yeah. 
And that is what he's going to be rewarded for if he ever wins the primaries there to contest uh, the elections. Okay, so um, as for that one, it's a complete waste of time. Nothing is going to happen. Uh, we see how Parliament itself has even tried to play political football with the inquiry, uh -huh. so to speak, that they are seeking to do in Parliament. Uh, Occupy the lobby house was very good. They pushed the police, they pushed the IGP uh, to change the unconstitutional and wrongful conduct in seeking to limit the venues of demonstrations. You don't determine the dates and venues for my demonstrations. It doesn't happen anywhere in any civilized world. And they must get to appreciate that. As for the claim that nobody was brutalized, nobody was manhandled during those demonstrations, it's a big lie. There are many people who were brutalized, who are still nursing their injuries. And some of them are actually instructing lawyers to go to court. Mm. And, and that's a very important point you make indeed. And, and on the subject of the IGP, and I think the MPP itself has a lot of questions to answer. We've asked this question here before. Take the party's constitution. In vetting prospective candidates for parliamentary position, you have to be of good character, right? It's in their constitution, black and white. How this ex-police officer qualifies, in spite of everything else that we, we, we know that he did, he himself testifies it, to be cleared by the vetting committee, yeah. to pick a form. So, well, he's, he's not going to be vetted. He's not going to be vetted. He's going to be vetted. We will see if the MPP actually opposes... Whether he qualifies to be whether he qualifies. Yes. Whether he qualifies to, to, to stand on their ticket. And that will say a lot about the MPP. Watch, if you watch, if you watch. Evans, can I say something? Yes, Samima, please go ahead. Right. So, I, I think that it's, it's obvious that no institution is sac sacrosanct. What is that the word? Yeah. Where yeah. our politics is concerned. Our politics is like the proverbial octopus, very insidious. It wants to find itself in every place, everywhere, every time. And, and that's why we're seeing the decay. In fact, if you look at this year's Afrobarometer report, where um, speaking about trust in public institutions, the police always comes up in terms of, you know, the perceptions of corruption and other, you know, issues. But generally in this year's Afrobarometer, you know, um, report, they said that even though Ghana has always had a deficit in terms of um, our democracy, where the supply of democracy, which is like the satisfaction with democracy, lags behind the demand, which is support for democracy this year has has revealed the highest deficit in the history of the Afrobarometer survey with satisfaction um, lagging behind you know uh, the demand for it at 26% and it's 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 because of these things that we see and I'm, I also would like to say that I have publicly um commended the approach of this current you know I, IGP because to engineer institutions that have a very deeply historical ethos and character is a very difficult process indeed. And um, the ethical issue that comes up for all of us to think about is if you know that some people were scheming against you, what will you do to find them out? That is an ethical uh, question we should all find ourselves. And for the IGP, whether he was part of the process to you know find um, who was scheming against him whether he was behind it the fact of the matter is that we all had loud and clear what the schemes against him when i agree that perhaps if this tape had not been made public maybe he would not be in the position that he is in now and that's the nature of of, of mm. the politics you yeah. know, don't and get caught you're right <laughs> even if that's all that tape strengthens his hand for me yeah. he does yeah. i mean yeah. you're going to say something you know, I mean, I mean, let's move on. Yeah, I mean, that case strengthens his hand. And I have said on State of Play with these gentlemen that the IGP remains my public servant of the year. And, and going back to the MPP thing, as the gentleman, the ex-police officer, go before them for vetting, your constitution says no member, no member shall be entitled to apply for nomination as a party's parliamentary candidate for any constituency unless he or she, and this is I, 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 is of good character. We'll see. But Evans, I'm talking fired. about so good character. character. You saw, almost became president. <laughs> you saw... <laughs> well, well Evans, Evans. still has to be quoted. No, yeah, let, let me make this point. Yeah, I know it's you subjective, saw, but yeah, we'll see how they apply that. You saw one of the committee mm -hmm. at a point in time when the man was asked, 
you know, whether he was a member of the NPP or not. You saw one of the committee members jump to his defense because at the time they didn't want him to say he's not a member of the NPP because he was still within the police service. And so he couldn't have boldly said, I'm, I'm a member, member of the, the NPP. NPP. And if he had denied being a member of the NPP, it meant he wouldn't qualify to contest as a member of parliament. So that actually should tell you what's going to happen. Well, we'll see. We're going to take a break. We'll return. Listen, we're saving the best for this next part. We're going to be talking about politics a bit. And, and then on the politics, just a range of issues. Election of Dr. Baumia, uh, resignation of Alan Chemanting. We're going to be talking about what happened this year, of course, this year in review. But most importantly, what these events mean for 2024. We'll tell you that too. Vote buying scandal. Almost everybody else talked about that. I mean, this year is when you saw that woman a, a, on top of that vehicle splashing the cash. Oh, yes, the MPP. Uh, primaries that just ended in, in Parliament in, in, the, in the areas where the, the orphan constituencies, where monies were shared. And for the first time, the people themselves came out to say, oh, they gave me the money. I, and people actually branded the cash with their image and name. We'll talk about that. And we'll also talk about the James Jachikui Singh issue, which is also very interesting indeed, and they are sent off by election. Remember, Kumewu also, a whole bunch of that together. And then the scandals of 20. 23. There are a lot of them, but top of that list is <laughs> Cecilia Dapa, stashed cash scandal. Yes, you are dapper if you keep money in your room. We'll talk about Frimpong Watting Galamse report. Do you remember that? Yes, we'll talk about that uh, when we return. You don't want to go anywhere. There's a lot to chew on. 2023 after this. <laughs>